This is part two. In this, the second part, I start by replacing the water pump. Now to refit the new water pump with the new gasket. Because we are using a new solid gasket and the surfaces aren't pitted, it isn't necessary to add any extra sealant. If the vehicle parts involved were fairly old, with uneven surfaces, then a very thin smear of sealant may increase the durability. So if we take a look at the new water pump, this is a KWP one. It was about £35 from Euro Car Parts. Item number is 201740035. So those are the rubber seals. The round one goes onto the push fit connector and the rectangular one goes onto the actual pump housing. And there's our solid gasket. So we need to remove that black plastic coupling. Uh, there's two bolts there, I think they're eight millimeters. And put that coupling onto the new pump using that new rectangular seal. So we undo these two bolts. And then we just pull the plastic coupling off and there you can see the rectangular rubber seal. So we need to change that for the new one. And the new seal will just sit inside the indentation as so. And just re-bolt that back into position. These bolts won't need to be too tight. After all, they are going into aluminium. So it's probably around 10 Newton meters, I would guess. So we now need to change the old O-ring on this pipe. So remove the old O-ring and discard that. Give it a bit of a clean to make sure there's no particles sat on there. So that's now ready for the new O-ring. I personally like to add just a little bit of red rubber grease onto that to help the pipes push together. It's probably not strictly necessary. So you may wish to ignore the bit I'm doing now. And just to check our new solid gasket actually lines up correctly. I want to make sure those holes line up. We haven't got a faulty one. And it all seems good.
So this is how it will sit on the car and that should slide in quite nicely now and that's how it will be all tucked behind the power steering pump. So now just a case of refitting that. Please note this bolt tightening sequence and the 10 newton meters for later. So putting the gasket on first That does go over two metal dowels, as you can see. And then to very carefully put the water pump on, making sure you don't knock the gasket, which I did several times, and then the gasket just falls on the floor. So very carefully lining it up, and we're on. Get those bolts in quick. So we've got seven bolts that need to be put back on the water pump. Now there is a certain sequence which I did sort of show in a diagram about a minute ago starting with one all the way through to seven um, and these bolts have got to be torqued to 10 newton meters in a progressive manner. Although I've speeded this part of the video up, you may still wish to just jump forward two minutes to where the pump's actually been torqued up and is complete. You're never quite sure whether to delete parts like this from the video, though some people may find it handy, just never know. So we now need to refit the pipe with the new o-ring on so that just slides in behind the power steering pump it should slide in to the water pump coupling and then just gradually bring the pipe up and there's just one bolt hole and then we put back in the eight millimeter bolt and tighten that up to again about 10 newton meters We are now onto the timing belt itself and refitting it along with a new tensioning roller. So looking at the new timing belt, it's a Deco one and it's model number KTB321 and it was £61. That comes with the tensioner as well. There's the tensioner with the pin still in position. Um, the pin must stay in position and is removed after fitting. What I now do is take the white marks that I made onto the old belt and transfer those onto the new belt by counting the teeth one by one. It's sort of like a backup way of ensuring the belt is exactly where it should have been. You also need to note there is a direction arrow on the belt. So 
So I'm going to mark the ridge with some yellow paint and that way you can see clearer where the two lugs straddle on that tensioning roller. Also it's worth, as it's a new water pump, just spinning it around to make sure that it actually sounds okay and that nothing's impeding it. So I've also marked the two lugs on the tensioner with some yellow paint as well to hopefully show exactly where this tensioner has to sit. So on it goes, make sure you still leave that pin in, you might need to pull it out slightly just to let the tensioner sit down. And make sure it still stays in. All right, so now it's in position. We can now put the nut back on, which is 13 millimeters. Now we need to torque tighten the crankshaft accessory pulley bolt to 15 newton meters. Now we need to fit the new timing belts. Can be a bit fiddly this. Um, and I actually had a slight issue where the white timing mark on the new belt didn't exactly line up with the white mark I had on the old belt. It was like one tooth out, as you'll see later on. Um, it definitely was out because it would, wouldn't go over the water pump pulley. Um, there was just no way it was going to do it. So it appears that that mark was out. Um, but thankfully I had backed myself up by adding white marks to the new belt. So I knew where the belt should be. As you can see, with the white mark where it's supposed to be, there was no way it was going to go over the water pump. Um, and when it did go over it pulled the camshaft out so it wasn't um, in, a f in alignment so that was definitely no good so I had to remove it and do it again but use the white marks that I had put on the belt so here you can actually see my marks the original marks and the new belt mark it was one tooth out So all aligns now with the camshaft pulley. That's all correct. So next we need to pull that pre-tensioning pin and drop it on the floor. Um, and we then have to fully tension the the tensioner correctly in a minute. So if I turn the Allen key in an anti-clockwise direction you should be able to see the markers start moving into alignment as such there. And then back up and then back in to alignment and then past alignment and then back to the correct place which is there so we need to tighten it there that's too far too far back and hopefully this coloured photo here shows and there and again I'll include an actual photo coloured in there so hopefully that helps where the marks are supposed to be so it's quite a fiddly job 
because with one hand you've obviously got to bring those tension marks into correct alignment and then tighten that 13 millimeter nut like so um, and then finally tighten of 24 newton meters with it being in the correct position So here it goes, putting the tension onto the tensioner and then carefully tightening it, making sure it's in the right place. Take up the slack on the nuts and then and then pull the allen key out. It's not easy. It's quite fiddly that. 24 newton meters. Now remove the locking pin from the flywheel. As so we need to turn the crankshaft through six revolutions. Once we have turned the engine through six revolutions, we then need to reinsert the flywheel locking pin and check all our alignment marks are still in the correct place. So with the camshaft lining up, we should be able to just pop the flywheel locking pin straight back in. And the pin goes straight back in easily. And not surprisingly, the crankshaft marks all line up. After rotating the engine six times, you should then loosen the tension and up by one turn. And while holding the six millimeter Allen key, add a tiny bit more tension. Looks to be about another four millimeters. Please see the next photo for this extra adjustment. And then finally, check that the tensioner is not coming into contact with the cylinder head using a mirror. It's very important that the tensioner doesn't make contact with the cylinder head or it will destroy itself and the belt. If you are replacing the water pump, make sure to reconnect the coolant pipe before refilling and the securing clip. Now remove the crankshaft pulley bolt and washer because we need to put the cover back on there. You might find it easier if you put the locking pin back into the flywheel for this part. Now that the timing belt has been fitted, it's time to put the timing belt covers back on and the engine mount. So starting with the lower timing belt cover, we pop that on and then using an 8mm socket, put the bolt back in and we tighten that to 10 newton meters. Then the intermediate cover, which is again a socket of 8mm, and these two bolts again are done up to 10 newton meters.
Then to replace the cast aluminium top cover, which is the four bolts and a socket of 10 millimeters for those. These will need to be torqued to 33 Newton meters. not forgetting to torque those to 33 newton meters. not forgetting the engine mount and that is a 16 millimeter socket and there's five of those bolts Then to tighten the engine mounting bolts, I did it to 62 Newton meters. Though you may need to check that with Dacia because my information came from the Renault Kangoo. Now to tighten the crankshaft accessories pulley using an 18mm socket. This requires an initial 40Nm torque setting followed by a 125 degrees angular setting. You may find you need to pop the flywheel locking pin back in for this.
Now we need to do the 125 degrees angular setting, as so. I now need to refill the cooling system, but I will be using fresh long life antifreeze that's good for five years. Also, I will be using a vacuum filling method so that I can complete the work quicker and not have to purge any air from the system. So with this system, you connect a sealed tap unit onto the coolant bottle seal that up and then create a vacuum using an air compressor. Once you have a vacuum you have another tube that's connected to the coolant and you shut off the air compressor part and open up the valve for the coolant. The coolant then just gets sucked straight into the engine and that's the job done. So now that that's primed and ready, we then connect the air compressor, which creates like a venturi effect and removes all the air. Once all the air has been removed, we then sh shut off the air compressor and open the tap to the coolant bottle. And there she goes. Coolant just fills straight up. You still need to check the coolant bottle after an initial drive and just top up if required. And not forgetting the coolant cap. And lastly to replace the engine cover which also houses the air filter. So put it onto the throttle body we attach the breather pipe, push it down on those three clips, like so. We attach the air intake pipe and the right hand side breather pipe for the gearbox. And lastly, tighten that Jubilee clip with a 7mm socket. It's that moment of truth time again, where we turn that ignition key. You may wish to record the current milometer reading at this point for the vehicle's service history. Thank you for watching and hope this was of interest to other home mechanics.